Yes, very good, dear Astromania, because premiering wars today, La Guerra gave me the Q-Sway from the famous company, especially the construction of excellent cameras, some other things, but above all, a camera, and it was a gift during the NIF, the President Fair exhibition in New York. So I'm going to talk today about one of the most interesting instruments that came out. Well, it came out recently, but it was exposed in the NF. I had a chance to see him manipulate it. Enjoy it. I think it's excellent. I mean, this one, small Astaroth, watcher of the skies above. It is 1H to C125D, XH to C125, ah, uh, sorry, DX. There is another older version than which is H to C125. No, no DX. Let's see which one. It's the difference. Advantages, disadvantages, prices, etc. Then just follow me. This is the Astro Row. This is the Astro Row that I think is excellent. I think it's almost $700, but we take out the bill. What the electron costs is 12, 12 12.5 centimeter, let's say the 15 centimeter Celestron is. It's quite a bit more expensive, two and a half times more expensive, and it's just a little bigger. I find it interesting. I, I, I have not been able to see in detail, let's say studying all the characteristics, but as you can see, the camera is placed here, it is 1F2, that is very, very bright, very bright. It's favorable here, for this is the L, the Mini Asuraf. As I said, it has a very small 225 millimeter focal length and 125 millimeter diameter. Isn't the effective diameter like this telescope has even central obstruction? So let's see what the actual effective diameter would be. Do you have this here that is placed in front of you for? Protect him. Of stray lights. Uh, the C, I, or etc. And then we are going to see some characteristics. As I said, it is from the Skywatcher company, it is 1F2. Theoretically, it is 1F2, this focal ratio F2. But really due to this central obstruction cameras that we put on it, etc. Well, it wouldn't really be 1F2. Let's see how much it would be. It's still very fast, despite us putting cameras on it, etc. But no, it wouldn't be 1F2 really. So, well, like I said, 125 millimeter aperture, 225 focal length, which would make 1F2. Theoretically, this central obstruction is 53 meter in diameter. That is this obstruction here we are going to This obstruction measures 53 millimeters in diameter, which must be accounted for in the total diameter. An important aspect is the weight, around 8.4 LAB, making it quite light and portable. The length of the tube as such would be about 15.7 in over 30 centimeters of distance. I imagine, I don't know if it would be including this anti-dew pipe, but hey, it's still quite, quite. Cortora, like I said. This central obstruction would do. What's that? The opening in English would be titirations. Something like this radius T, something like that would be like effective radius. Effective radius would be less than two. Let's see how much we are going to do a very simple calculation here. Well, what would the calculation be like? Simple as that, area calculation. Remember, area equal to PIS squared then. It's the square. Let's go to this diameter 125 or it's squared over four. It doesn't matter, of course, sorry, diameter squared over four. Let's go. Divided by 2 to use the radius instead of the diameter squared would give us this. And now multiplied by pi, we're going to put 3 points, 14. We know that it's another number. But hey, no, it doesn't use the scientific calculation. These are pretty approximate values. 
this will be the total area of the telescope. Now we have to subtract the central obtaining area that you remember is 53 millimeter. Let's not have, I repeat, I don't have the scientific quality, so I'm going to make it a little more laborious. But warning port 53 meter upon two, this will be the diameter. Now squared by 3.14 approximately, which is P would be this. So now we accept the total area minus the area of the central obstruction would be 0.265.625 minus. Twenty-two oh five point sixty and five OK. This is the effective area. If we discount the the area that's going to rob us of this central obstruction. Now we want to know what the focal relationship is with this effective area. For that we have to convert area back to A. Excuse the diameter, yes, so for that we divide the area by pi. Let's have the square root and multiply it by 2, because remember, when we do this, let's have stadium, but we want to know the diameter. You have to multiply by 2, so we're going to divide this by pi, or approximately. I'm not using the exact value of p, but hey, the difference is minimal. Square root of this would be 56.6. And now we multiply that by 2, because this 56.6 is the diameter, or K113.2, 130.2 would be the area. The effective diameter, let's say, is as if we were using a 113 millimeter diameter telescope. Remember, this one is 102, 125, 125 millimeter, or 12.5 centimeter, but because of this central extrusion, it's really like we're using one of 130 millimeter or 11.3 centimeter. So how do we find the focal relationship? Now we're going to cancel, close, delete. I don't want to do it here. I didn't want to do the whole account together because in order not to confuse it, I'm doing it one by one so that you understand what each step is then. Focal length ratio 225. Divided by this value, approximately 113.2 or K, this would be the, the effective focal ratio wouldn't be 1F2, it really would be an F2.2. It's still extremely fast because, well, 2 is pretty fast, a little less than. Than 2, but still. Still effective now many cameras for this to be the real value. From focal ratio, the cameras have to have a diameter of 53 million. If they are larger than many cameras, then they are thicker. Let's say that these 53 would be different. This 53 millimeter area is the frontal obstruction of the telescope. We already see what the real focal radius f2.2 is. Now, many cameras don't have that diameter. They are even bigger. For example, I have this K-many. This is the A6183 phonochromatic A6183. Has a pretty standard format. Many ACI QHY cameras. Some others, the hot tail, I think, I don't remember. Several have this, 78 millimeters. Remember, the center section is 53 millimeters, making it 78. Let's see. What would be, let's say, the effective focal relationship if how to speak English? T not in BDR, apologies in BDFT. It's the effective acceleration because we have to affect all this instruction. In this case, it would be, I repeat, 78 minutes. Well, with this camera, this type of camera, which is a fairly standard format, let's say with a diameter of 78 millimeter meters 
Well, the effective diameter, let's say, of the telescope would be 97.67 millimeters. That is 9.8 centimeter more or less focal length. It would be the effective diameter and the effective focal ratio would be 2.56. 2.56 is, of course, less than 2 and less than 2.2, but it's still a pretty, pretty wide focal ratio now. There are other cameras, even larger format. One, for example, this one that I have, the ASIC 071 in color, is as you can see, we are going to compare here with the 183. It's bigger, diameter is 78 millimeter. This one is 85 meters. In other words, the obstruction of the central light entrance would be even greater. So let's do the math. Let's see what the effective focal ratio would be with this camera. Good for these cameras. Like this, like LA AC 0 0.71, which has a diameter of 85 meter than LA. The effective diameter of the telescope would be 91.65 meters. That is just over 9 centimeter in diameter. In other words, here, a telescope with a diameter of 9 centimeter with a focal length of 250 more 25 seems that would be worth, which would make a focal ratio, as you see here, of 2.73 more or less. That is quite greater than 2. Uh, but it's still a very fast telescope. 2.70 and peak 2.73 is, uh, is a very fast, very bright focal ratio. So even with these larger format cameras, it would still be excellent. Well, like I said, this version of X. What do you see here? Ah, I see 125DX. YDX is the modern version with no backup and a specific screw mechanism. It's different from the old version that didn't have this feature. Uh, how would it be said in Spanish to graduate the focus? No, there exists another older version, not essentially similar to X. The H to C125, not from X, that is available as far as I know. In AliExpress, I don't know if it costs in other places. Well, here comes 584. The price varies, but I ship 135, which means it would be above $700. Let's see. Then what is the main disadvantage that the focuser does not have? We're going to say a picture back here, right? Yes. Here, as you can see, no, it doesn't have this note here, this screw to focus behind, and it would focus here quite uncomfortable above all because there is no way to do it, putting an autofocus, etc. But hey, it is a more economical version. It is not everyone's decision. This is on AliExpress. That's where I have seen it. And well, the ones that are selling here in the United States are this version that has this focus. The focuser has it here behind. Well, that's it. I think it's an excellent one. Instrument. At a good price, considering the central tuction is 53 millimeters, and we press a camera of that smaller diameter, then we would be talking about an effective diameter telescope. Just over 11 centimeter, 110, so many millimeters, 225 millimeter. Of each focal. Uh, an f2.2. If we use the other cameras, we will be talking about 90 centimeter of effective diameter, radius diameter, with the largest with 0 0.71, since we would be talking about about 91 millimeter, 9.1 centimeter effective diameter. It's still a sizable telescope. Diameter. When we talk about the photography, no. If we think about apochromatics, if we talk about apochromatic reflectors, because the prices would be well above that. There are few exceptions. For example, the ASCA 102. I think it is. Or 103, I don't remember now which means it's about four inches tall and costs about $1,000. It would be the only exception. 
but it has a fairly larger focal ratio, so it wouldn't be, a, of course, an f2.2 or anything. So I... Seems like an excellent instrument, but which one exactly? Buy, well, it would be your decision if you buy the ones that are available, at least. In the United States? These are available on AliExpress at a certain cost. Just over 600 if we count the shipping cost, but it doesn't have the focus behind it. The focus behind has to focus in front, and, well, those that are available here in... Explore Scientific. I'll leave a direct link in the description for Skywatches, as they usually cost around $900. But of course, it's better, no more, more advanced, let's say. It's the version back then. Your decision seems to me, I repeat, an excellent telescope for the diameter it has for the focal ratio, which is very fast for these photographs. It seems to me one of the best investments that can they be done. So then it's your decision when you both buy, if you're interested in buying it. Remember, High Point Scientific gives you the option to pay in installments if you live in the United States. I don't know if in other countries they have that option of buying High Point Scientific. And in installments, they can pay it in three years. That is, it would be much more affordable, let's not say. So that's all for now. It seems like an excellent instrument to me. I'm seriously considering buying it, but I have. Several. I am already contemplating the vast number of telescopes. Which one? Please remove any unnecessary ones. Let's ensure one fulfills the same role, possibly at 70 and 12D, ensuring it doesn't lack functionality. Field flattener, etc. Let's see, but I repeat, I recommend it. It seems excellent to me. Telescope, so. I would appreciate hearing your thoughts and opinions in the comment section, wouldn't you agree? That's all for now. And until the next video in Asumania.